we're going to close it off about a team down in Florida, Division II squad, that didn't start playing games until 2016. Inner squad only all of 2015. So they did the classic. You bring in your you know, your red shirt class, red shirt all of them, inner squad scrimmages, that's it. 2016, they play their first round of games. Go about 500. It didn't take them more than one year after that. 2017, they played in the national championship game and lost to Texas A&M Commerce. The University of West Florida started playing in 2016. The next year. They play in the natty, and they lose in the natty in 2017. So you're like, man, that's that would have been a crazy story, but good luck getting back. Took them two years. 2019, they go and win the whole damn thing, and they had some really impressive foes uh, that they topped on the way to that. They were 13-2. and two. They actually opened up the year with a loss at Carson Newman, which is kind of a shocker. Their next loss during the regular season, came to the number one team in the country at the time, Valdosta State, Gulf, uh, Gulf South Conference foe. At Valdosta State, they lost by five to the number one team in the country. They had get back, though, just three weeks later against Valdosta State, once again in title down, down there in Georgia, and they beat them by three points, go on to win uh, against number six, Lenore Ryan in the quarters, number two, Ferris State in the semifinals. I remember watching that game. And, and finally, number four is Mankato in the championship, 48-40. Absolute shootout. And if you remember the guy that was playing quarterback at the time, he didn't, gra- I shouldn't say he didn't graduate. He didn't finish at West Florida. That's Austin Reed. He was at UVF before making the move over to Western Kentucky. The guy coaching him, the quarterback coach from 2017 to 2020, his name's Caleb Nobles. He's now the head coach down there for the Argos, the Argonauts. He's only the second head coach in team history behind uh, Sturbeck, I believe his, his name was. And he played quarterback for the Argos and came on, quarterback coach, and then joined the staff at Clemson after the 2020 season. He was the Office of Player Development in that kind of role for Clemson. He comes back to be the head coach of the Argos. He's got these guys picking up right where they left off. Uh, He's done some fantastic work over there. He is an elite play caller. Like I said, Coach Austin Reed has coached multiple big-time quarterbacks. Talk about Pee Wee Jarrett here is another name off the list, and he's got a couple more guys coming through that program that should be uh, pretty exciting to watch. His wife, Katie's UVF volleyball alum. He's got some really deep ties. But back to... uh, you know, the team kind of more in general, 64-25 and 25 all-time record right now for the Argonauts down there in Pensacola, Florida. That is impressive. Their stadium is the Penn Air Stadium down once again in Pensacola, Florida. Here is the flyover, what we got going on down there for the Argos. Pretty nice setup. Like I said, this team has not been around for very long. It's a really new facility. They just got brand new AstroTurf, turf, excuse me, I believe in 2023. So this field is fresh. Got a nice little stands right there. Again, the stadium is nothing flashy. The location is great. And there are plans moving forward to continue to renovate this thing because everyone knows when you win big-time college football games and you do it consistently, especially at the high level that uh, UVF, UWF excuse me, is doing right now, your facilities are only going to get better and better. So I think this is just really the start uh, for not only this field, but this team and kind of this program, which is really exciting. It seats about 4,000 people. There's uh, sounds like more than 2,000 more seats for standing room. And I believe there have been multiple occasions where they utilize most of that. Here's one of them. Here's a great drone shot of the stadium and then they get some pretty sunsets down there in uh, in Pensacola so that's a pretty sweet shot but they got a lot going on down there uh they've got I, I, I'm a food guy, so I don't know why. When I find these information, I think it's hilarious. They got barbecue. They got Greek catering food. They got a food court behind the bleachers. I'm always a fan of, like, kind of the football building right behind the end zone right there. Um, that hill with all the people is electric. And uh, sometimes it sounds like Penn Air, the credit union who is the title sponsor of this facility, it sounds like they're giving out free food at some of these games. So uh, that's pretty awesome. But uh, pretty sweet facilities down there for the Argos. They got some, they got some really good things uh, going on. Now... As far as this last year, they had two guys earn NFL shots after the 2023 season. Both of them were first team, uh, no, not sorry, not first team All-Americans, but this man was a first team All-American. That's John Giles, the wide receiver from the Argonauts. You can see in the little edit here. He has actually signed a UDFA deal with the New York Giants, the dude. Uh, I think a lot of people talked about, obviously a freak athlete, um, he had to be to get to that level. But the catch radius on him was something that I think was kind of a selling point. The quick twitch speed, obviously the full. He, he has like a, he's a total, I don't know, like a, the five-tool equivalent, right? Like I think in baseball, like a five-tool player. He 
runs the whole route tree. He does a lot of things very well, can beat you with speed. Um, but I think the catch radius and kind of that freak athleticism was what at least got his foot in the door. And obviously he's made the most of it, earning himself a deal with the Giants. The other guy who we, once again, have had the pleasure to uh, have on the show here is Pee Wee Jarrett, a.k.a. Byron. But hearing himself a minicamp invite to the New York Jets, the former signal caller for the Argos. Now, his stint with the Jets was short. I believe they had some concerns about previous maybe shoulder injuries or something of the sort. But talk about a dude who, coming from the junior college, community college level, came and just lit up the scene at West Florida. Very prototypical NFL build. The dude is Built. He's got a rocket of an arm, and he's had some great help. Don't get me wrong. You talk about Giles as a dude on the outside that's done a lot of great things. The year prior, David Durden, the, I believe, I hopefully got that one right, but he's the receiver that went from West Florida last year and I believe is still potentially with the Cowboys. Or I know he landed with the Cowboys originally, but they've put out some NFL qual- a quality caliber talent here very recently. And Austin Reed, I think you can throw right on that list as far as quarterbacks go, because he was uh, UWF made, man, even though he was obviously burst onto the scene at Western Kentucky with the Hilltoppers. But alas, 2024, this season for the Argonauts down there in West Florida, they got exciting season count up. Let's take a look at their, their schedule here. And what makes the schedule a little bit interesting, I mean, Grand Valley State jumps off the schedule here at first, because that is awesome. What kind of makes this interesting, not just for them, but for all the Gulf South teams, is that West Georgia officially made that jump up to D1. Now, excuse me, I'm totally blanking on what conference they joined, but West Georgia did used to be in the Gulf South Conference very, like, as of totally recently, um, but they've made that a jump officially to Division One. so that's opened up some more out-of-conference scheduling opportunities for teams uh, in the Gulf South, and you'll see here, they've got two out-of-conference in the first three weeks. They open up against McKendree, which will be a solid test for them at home. The homestand continues with West Alabama, who will be another great test, and then you go at Grand Valley State, who is slated right now as one of the top you know, five to eight teams in the country right now, they could easily be top three depending on who you ask, right? And that would be me. I, I certainly think they've earned that right in Super Region 3 and, and being one of those teams that, hey, you want to prove it, you're going to play the Lakers. And I think that's exactly what Coach Noble and the uh, Argonauts are thinking right now that, hey, we got a game early on that we're going to show everyone exactly what we're about. We got treated to do an absolute game last year, Grand Valley and Colorado Mines. I'm hoping this one in week three is just going to be just as spectacular. Then you get into some more Gulf South play here, Mississippi College. Delta State will be a huge one. Now they are missing some pieces. Patrick Gigog, the player of the year there in uh, in that state, uh, regardless of level, they lose him, who was a Harlan Hill candidate last year, a nominee, I should say. That will still be an incredible game. Showing Shorter, Erskine, North Greenville. This stretch right here probably doesn't jump out at you, but in this conference, you never really know. And then you close out the year at Valdosta State. That game could have a lot of implications when it comes to the Gulf South, when it comes to that super region, when it comes to the playoff scheme and structure as a whole, because there's a great chance that one or both of these teams will have one loss at this point of the year. So now you talk about in this very fragile Division II playoff picture, which is limited geographically, obviously, you're talking about two teams that if you have two losses could be one of the first snubs out of the playoffs. So, again, not looking too far ahead. There's a lot of ball to be played between now and then if you're the Argos or if you're the Blazers down there, respectively, at Valdosta. But I'm eyeing that one. One, potentially, is a Gulf South championship game. The fact that it's the last week of the regular season for them is epic. And also because the playoff implications are going to be huge. But... That's kind of it for West Florida. That's the cliff notes. That's what you need to know about the Argonauts. Let me know what team you guys want to hear about next. Thank you.